Uh, what we will do is get straight into the real theme of the talk, which is deconstructing the facade self. Now, the first question probably we need to ask ourselves is why bother? Well, if the problems with the facade self aren't big enough for you to bother with, then my suggestion is there's either a really, really, really big facade or uh, you've got no facade self, and either one is highly unlikely. <laughs> so I feel that the problems associated with the facade self are so great that why would we not bother? Like, surely we would, it would be one of our highest priority things to do, deconstruct the facade. And um, you might just, with that, pull, have to pull that cable around the back, maybe, because um, it's going to get in your way. On the, uh, you'll have to pull it around the other side. Yeah, you can move forward a little. Okay. All right, so how do you feel about deconstructing the facade? Yeah. Well, the reality is our facade um, lives a lot in fear, right? So for the majority of us, we're going to struggle a lot to deconstruct our facade. As we pointed out in the previous talk, it's the most difficult thing that you can achieve, that you will be faced with probably in your entire life, actually. All right, so deconstructing your facade self is the most difficult thing you will be faced with probably for your entire life. So you still up for it? Yep, g'day, let's go. <coughs> That's my opinion. The description of the facade self should give us enough motivation to deconstruct it. It's obviously pretty damaged, isn't it? And obviously struggles. It causes a lot of pain in our life. It causes a lot of pain in the world, actually. Our facade causes the world's pain. So, yeah, of course we'd want to remove it. So let's move on and let's go through some of the reasons. So reason number one, all of the emotions associated with the facade self will continue to dominate our life until we remove them. Now, I mean it's going to dominate the rest of your life until you remove them. Now, if the rest of your life means 10,000 years' time, you still haven't got rid of one of your facades, it's going to dominate 10,000 years of your life. That, that's how long it's going to last. Remember your facade, it's your choice to remove. No one's going to force you to remove it. God's laws, of course, are all constructed to assist you to remove it, and all of God's laws are working against your facade but you're not going to get forced into removing it. That's your choice. So if you choose to not remove it for 100 years, 1,000 years, 10,000 years, that's how long it's going to be there. I've met people who've had their facade for 70,000 years. That's how long you can have a facade in the spirit world. Yep. And during that time, there was no more development after a certain point of their real self. So uh, I wouldn't recommend that. The real love cannot be experienced by the facade. Remember, the facade is all about bartering systems. So you, the facade self, every one of your facade self, you know that facade self you created when you were a teenager, you know, and you thought that's the facade where I'm going to get some boys or get some girls interested in me, that facade. You know that one? Yeah, it never got loved. Because the facade can't be love. Love, love is a soul-to-soul -soul transaction and not a facade-to-facade -facade transaction. So your facade self is never going to experience real love. So there's a good reason for removing it. There's no point to it. If it, if it, if it and and the, you know the, the, the painful irony of it is it believes it's going to get loved. Isn't that a painful irony? You create the facade in order to get loved, but if you have to create something in order to get loved, you were never loved in the first place. That's the irony. You see, love is a gift. It's not something that you have to earn from someone. So, so whenever you, you had to create a facade in order to get loved, you weren't getting loved when you were in that situation. You were in a bartering system with that person. Yeah? Okay. 
The absolute truth will never be accepted by the adult facade. Why? Because the adult facade loves the lie. The adult facade is only interested in the lie. The whole word facade means lie. All right. So you're not going to know God's truth when you're in a facade, ever, ever. Loving relationships are not possible for the adult facade, as we've already pointed out. It's impossible for the adult facade to have a loving relationship because every relationship is a facade-based relationship. You're not having a relationship with the real person. You're having a relationship with a figment of somebody's imagination or creation. That's not the real person. So love is not able to be transacted under those circumstances. Humility is not possible with the adult facade. And I mean it's not possible. Is that a bit of a surprise? It's like, oh, yeah, I'm in my adult facade, but I can be humble. No, you can't. While you retain this adult facade, you are never going to be humble. Because humility is experiencing and feeling, let's define it properly, a passionate desire to feel and experience your real, true, sincere emotions. Does the adult facade have that? Never. Never. The adult facade doesn't have that. The adult facade only wants you to experience emotions that you find acceptable. Right? That's not, that's not any real emotion. Right? To get a bit of heat going again, just to keep you alive for the next <laughs> few, min few minutes at least. All relationships of the adult facade are based on bartering addictions with others. All relationships are based on bartering addictions with others. What can you give me? What can I give you to make us all both, both happy? Or, you know, again, it's a facade. How can you ever be happy? You're going to have only the appearance of happiness. Right? And that's why many of us, when we go get to be alone, we feel desperately unhappy, unfulfilled, un, 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 and there's all a whole list of uns, isn't there, of things that we don't feel when we're alone. And that's why we have to engage with people, engage with things, engage with food, engage with sex, engage with whatever other addictions we're trying to get involved in, in order to feel something because when we're alone we're already detuned we want we want to not feel yep. the adult facade does not wish to allow the expression of our hurt self and the next one the adult facade does not allow the ex development of our real self because our adult facade has been created to avoid those two selves to repress them and keep them away from even our own awareness of ourselves. So while our adult facade remains, you're never really going to have a decent relationship with anyone. You're not going to have a relationship with God. It's impossible, as we'll point out next. The adult facade cannot have a relationship with God. Because what are relationships with God based upon? Sincere real feelings and emotions, right? So if we just go to the next line, Fab, the God does not want a relationship with our facade. God wants a relationship with your real self. That's not your facade. So, so a, a relationship between your facade self and God's impossible. This is why many of you don't really have a relationship with God even though you think you do because you're attempting to have a relationship with God through a facade. And it's not going to work. It's not ever going to work. Give, you've got to give it up. We want to have a relationship with God by connecting with our real self. Our real self is the individual who has the relationship with God. Now, just as a bit of an aside, our real self, remember, we are only one half of our real self. So that even complicates things further, doesn't it? Because there's actually another person in this world or universe who has the same problems we have probably. So there we go. We've got our three selves, which is our real, hurt, 
and facade self, and then we meet the other half of our self, and they have a real hurt and facade self, and which are the ones that can have a relationship if we want to have a soulmate relationship? Only those two can have a relationship with each other. All right? And that means now there's four selves. When you meet your soulmate, there's now four selves to get rid of. And that's assuming you only have one facade. If you have ten facades, there's now like ten facades each. That's now 22 selves to get rid of. Can you see why when you meet your soulmate it might be a little complicated unless you've dealt with some things? All right? Yeah. The soulmate relationship is based on a real self to real self connection. Without developing your real self, you can never meet your soulmate. Ever. You probably won't. And if you do, you wouldn't recognize them anyway, and you'd probably have a relationship with your facades. Right? You've got to get through these layers of yourself in order to have a real relationship with anyone. Very important thing to understand. So there we go. There's obviously lots of other reasons we could come up. We, we could probably list a hundred reasons as why get rid of it. I think it's fairly self-evident that we need to get rid of it if we ever are going to experience any joy or happiness in our lives. Yep.